I'm the king of the sunset flip, the greatest director of all time, the greatest director in all professional wrestling, and this is my main man, the lead, Frankie Flynn. And you are listening to Wrestling Cheers. Break a leg. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, even if you are a hacker. This is Wrestling Cheers. I am your host. I am Heavy Set. Here on Wrestling Cheers, we like to talk about things going on in the Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene. We preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. This will be a preview for this Saturday's show, not at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, but AIW Zero Cool at the Winchester, Saturday, October 13th, 2018, 7.30 bell time. The Winchester can be found at 12112 Madison Avenue in Lakewood, Ohio. All tickets are $20, and you can get them at the door. Let's get into all the housekeeping before we continue back into that card. We are Wrestling Cheers. Like I said, we're brought to you by the Trending Topics Network and NEO Sports Insiders. Please Rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash WrestlingCheers, Twitter.com slash WrestlingCheers, and Instagram.com slash WrestlingCheers. Email, if you so choose a desire, WrestlingCheers at gmail.net. And we, of course, we have the WhatAManeuver.net store. Head on over there and pick yourself up some what, uh, not what a maneuver, pick us, well, yeah, go to there and then pick up, pick yourself up something wrestling cheers related. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get into this show. Let's talk about it and let's bring on the co host, the panelists. We have first, we'll start with Patrick. Hey, everybody, what's happening? You, How's it going? You excited for the show? Oh, yeah. Um, it's weird. We're doing that on a Monday instead of the normal oh. day we usually record. Pulling back the curtain, pulling back the curtain. Yeah, um, that's because which is, this will be weird because this will be posted on Thursday at the normal time. But Tuesday night, I'm planning on going to the ICP show in Kent. Haven't been to an ICP show in 15 years. And there's a lot more to that whole story. Patrick, you actually got a little preview of that story. Eventually, I'll tell it on the Super Fantastic Podcast because there's a lot to talk about. And I actually... I'm not the only person here that will be there. We also have Thrift Store Jobber. Hey, how's it going, folks? Uh, yes, I will also be in attendance tomorrow at the ICP show. Uh, I will be turning 35 at that show, uh, so please give me any drugs that you have with you. Um, yeah, my girlfriend's <laughs> taking me to the ICP on my birthday, and I, uh, I'm very excited. I thought that's why you would have opened the show with, uh, even if you're down with the clown, because you guys are both going to the ICP show. So I thought maybe that's how the, the open would have been, but I guess not. I mean, I could end the show like that. Normally, because people won't know exactly what's going to be in the episode. I don't know what that's technically going to be in the episode. So I try to do something with the preview that's related to the episode. If it's the interview, interview kind of. A little bit different because I recorded that beforehand. We're getting into semantics right now. Anyway, um, yeah, Jobber, people are going to hear this after the show, like two days after. Oh, Christ's sake. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> just, just putting the vibe out there. Maybe someone will, you know, it's all right. Yeah, well, hopefully you saw me at that show and gave me drugs and, uh, <laughs> you know, celebrated my birthday with me. So, yeah, sweet. I... Will be wearing slash I was wearing a Nick Gage shirt. I hope you didn't give me drugs because I can't do that with my job. So thank you, but no thank you. So that, that's a real shame. Eh, I don't know. I was never big on drugs. Like I like alcohol, and even I'm not that big on alcohol because I hate throwing up. 
So alcohol is real bad for you. Every other drug is sweet, except for coke. Don't do coke and opiates. Yeah, about to say that. Why am I talking about this on <laughs> fucking radio? Let's turn. That's not. Um. First question we got to figure out about this show. Third Star Jobber, are you going to make it through the whole show? Uh, yeah, I will. Wow. Uh, wow. It's, you know, <laughs> coming out, coming out hot with this. Um, well, like we, yes, we mentioned, we were, we're recording this on Monday. The AIW podcast came out, and that's kind of a thing that needs to be talked about because it kind of was mentioned. Hey, you know, I'll take my licks. I uh, I earned this. It was a stupid move. Uh, I was just told. Fortunately, the only AIW like roster member, staff member, whatever that actually saw the chair incident happen was the Duke. So, <laughs> you know, that's that's my that's my real comeuppance in all this is is this this motherfucker. I got to hear it from him. And, you know, he, he's right. But doesn't mean I'm not going to give it back. Yeah, but he didn't even really say anything that bad. I mean, it was funny, but he didn't like fucking roast you. Rick has roasted you harder on this fucking show than the Duke even said. So. <laughs> no, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, uh, you know, it's earned. So I'm not even that mad. And it was, uh, you know, he got me. What can I say? I thought he went kind of easy. You know what I mean? I, shit, we've talked a lot of shit to that dude. I'm surprised he hasn't like free, you know, <laughs> let us have it. Yeah, it's it's, <sighs> you know, the saga will continue. I love it. I just figured we would have to get you a special bolted down chair, something like that, to where like maybe we have to get you in the bleachers so you can't I, throw a chair. That's that's. I already thought about that, but uh, <laughs> I feel like this place will be standing room only. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, there'll probably be some seats. I, I guess. Have either of you guys been there before? I have, but I don't know if you have or not. I have not. I've I've seen pictures of it, but they said today on the podcast that it's just going to all be standing room only. I would imagine it's like a Wrestle Rager situation, guardrails and standing. Yeah, it's real small. I haven't been there. Like, I used to live on that side of town, and I haven't been there in at least a year. But I've seen you know, like stand up comedy there before. And, you know, you can definitely fit a ring in there, but I would say it's probably more comparable size-wise to Mahal's when they do old wrestling there. Uh, I don't know if either of you guys have been to those shows, but, you know, uh, it's it's very small. There's not a whole lot of room. Nobody's doing fucking, you know, sentons or whatever off the top rope. Uh, but it works. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's small, but it's, and it's tight, but it works. So that's what I'm guessing this will be, but, you know, it'll be all right. Yeah, like I, I don't. I didn't even hear that was going to be standing room only. Did I miss that part of the podcast? Um, maybe. I mean, they definitely went over it because somebody. I'm pretty sure somebody asked about sitting or this. Maybe it was Steve Guy. Or it, it was brought up, and I'm almost positive Thorne said standing room only. It was when they were discussing like how many tickets would be available and if walk up tickets were still available. So it's one of the only few downfalls of me listening at work. Sometimes I might zone out what I'm listening to to pay attention to work shit so eh, I, I might have missed that but i i honestly didn't catch it so i hit that backwards 15 seconds button all the time because of crap like that at work i'm like whoop gotta rewind a minute yeah so i mean if that's the case i mean i hate that because i just i hate standing a long time but it is what it is like it's it's i like this type of show the way how they talked about it how it's basically a music link show but not at music links I understand everybody on the west side of Cleveland doesn't want to go over to Menor and all that. I get it. But regardless, it's almost the same fucking drive for me. So I don't care. Though, yeah. at least I get you're, Akron now. At least I get those shows where I'm like, yeah, they're close. Yay. Right. I mean, you're kind of far where you are for either, you know, Mentor or the Cleveland shows. But as a West Sider, I go to all the Mentor shows. I don't care. But I mean, if you're going to ask my opinion, of course, I would rather not drive, you know, the 50 minutes home. So. All right. Let's get into this card. Let's talk about some of these matches going on for Zero Cool. All the matches as a whole, we have Alley Cat versus Zoe Sky. All Ego Ethan Page versus Joshua Bishop. AJ Gray versus Matthew Justice, The Duke versus Wes Barkley, the production of Eddie Only and Derek Director versus Weird World, Dominic Greeny versus Zach Thomas, Party Never Stops, Big Twan Tucker and Parker Pierce versus The Young Studs, Eric Ryan and Bobby Beverly, The Jollyville Fuckets versus No Consequences of Chase Oliver and uh, Trey Lamar. A six-man tag, uh, not tag match, a six-man 
scramble match, TKD versus Ryder Reed versus Rex Brody versus Brian Carson versus Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham versus Garrison King and the main event for the evening, the production versus PME for the AIW Tag Team Championships. And that is the production of Magnum CK and Frankie Flynn. And yeah, PME, Philly Marino. Uh, yeah, we got those down. Uh, let's start with let's start with a, a do good match, and that's a uh, all ego Ethan Page. Uh, spoiler alert: if you you're not up on that new Impact roster member versus big Impact roster fan Joshua Bishop. It, it kind of I would say like it kind of sucks that we didn't get Ethan Page last month. But if this is the do good of like all right, like I won't do th- I can't do that, but I'll do this. Like I'm fine with that. Like it's. Especially getting him, I think this is going to be like right after he gets back from Japan. It'd be nice and jet lagged. It'd be great. <laughs> um, He's going to go on you know, first. Oh, go ahead. I said he was going to go on first. Oh yeah, of course. Um, but no, uh, it is really insane to me. I think Josh Bishop is the first like open Impact fan I think I've ever met. Uh, I know they're I know they're out there, but he like loves Impact. That I I love that and. Uh, you know, that's why Ethan missed the last show. If you guys haven't, you know, obviously heard heard about that or listened to his podcast. Um, so, yeah, good for him. And it's it, Josh will get to wrestle an Impact Superstar. I don't know if he's done that yet, but he uh, will now get his chance. Yeah, you think Thorne did that on purpose? Like, gave him the match, uh, even though it was obviously the do-good match. He wasn't, uh, when this was planned, he probably, oh, maybe Thorne knew he was going to be on Impact. But either way, well, good for Ethan. But, yeah, you think he was like, yeah, we'll give him. Give him the bishop because he loves impact so much. Well, I don't know. Did you listen to his podcast yet? I know, I know you do usually. Yeah. Uh huh. I was gonna say I, he kind of. It kind of seemed like it was a last minute thing. Him being on impact, so like he literally had to cancel. It sounded like two days before AIW, sh- you know, last show. So, yeah. um, I don't think it was set up like that originally. I know there's like kind of that sort of a storyline going on, you know, between those guys, but uh, I don't think it's just because of the impact connection. But it makes sense to redo it this way. Yeah, he actually didn't say anything about AIW. He actually didn't say it was weird. I thought it was weird he, why he didn't say anything, why he wasn't there. He just glossed over it and said, "Oh, you know, go there. That show's always good." No, he, then, he very, he very, he was like a one line thing. He's like, "I had to cancel AIW." He was yeah, he about, said that right, yeah. right. That's 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 all he said about it. Recently, which right, yeah, he just didn't yeah. allude to it. Um, yeah. he he alluded to something cool like the week after that. Then he even said, "Oh, I have sorry." Maybe he said on Twitter, "I have something really cool coming, but I can't say." But yeah, and I think that's probably what it was. But yeah, good for him. I mean, I love you. Oh no, Page. I mean his his most recent podcast, like this week, he talks all about it. Like yeah. It just came out on Friday, I think. Yeah, because uh, actually I just listened to that last night. Uh, it, like his show releases on Thursday, which I learned is such a wrestling podcast dump day where everybody, including the show now, like we, we release on Thursday. So, yeah, that's such a clusterfuck. But because of the whole impact thing they wanted to talk about, they're like, well, let's just talk about it and have it posted on Friday. Yeah, right. They waited a day. Yeah. But I mean, two weeks ago or like three weeks ago, mm-hmm. he hinted at the impact thing. I'm not knowing what it was, but he said, oh, in the coming weeks, I got something cool. Yeah, that's the only thing that I remember hearing, like something happened and he couldn't talk about it. And obviously he wasn't turned away at the border. So it wasn't that. And it figured it was something. But I almost thought it was impact. But I'm like, eh, I, like I kind of like dismissed it because that'd be the only thing that makes sense. And then kind of worked out him being in japan when that episode gets released and uh it it was a kind of nice well-kept secret that not that many people knew he kept hinting at it but nothing was on the on the head where you're like oh yeah it's definitely this i was like oh wait maybe it's maybe it's this but maybe it's just him being ethan page do you think um shit what was i lost my train of thought my daughter came in here and talked to me sorry (laughs) yeah ethan page I know. Fuck. I had something I was going to say. Sorry. Ethan Page, Japan, Impact Wrestling. Oh, uh, going back to actually what Thrift Store Jobber said, uh, Joshua Bishop is not the only public Impact Wrestling fan. I believe our own young Ed of Pod Van Dam, a cheap plug for him. Uh, check out Pod Van Dam. Uh, new new episodes, new formats have been coming out. It's been uh, a bit interesting. It's fun to listen to Ed kind of talk alone. That he's not really used to. 
I keep telling him to come over to my house and record it, and I'll do it with him. He keeps saying he will, but then he doesn't. But it's okay. It's his show. Yeah. He just keeps see- seeming like he wants somebody else to do it with him, and I'm, you know, putting the offer out. That's all. I never met. Did he ever met, ever meet the other kid that he did the show with? I've never actually got to meet him in an AIW. And I think he said he doesn't really come much anymore because he works second shift or third shift or something. So I've never actually met it's, the other guy. It's been a while. Like, I've never met him. But, like, I know it's been a while since he's been to a show. So, uh, I know doing a show alone is difficult, especially with Ed and, like, he's, I don't know, I think conscious, like, self-conscious, like, certain things he says or whatever. Just he's he's used to, like, talking with people. So, when it's yeah. just, just just you in front of a microphone talking, it it's kind of, it is kind of weird, but I don't know. I've I've done it before. I've had, Besides this show, I had a short-lived show where I just... It was like like my own audio journal almost, but I, so I, I, I remembered. Stuff. I remembered what I let me say it before I forget again. <laughs> um, do you think Doctor Dan will be uh, with Ethan Page again? Are they going to continue that part of the storyline? Is he going to be continuing the the three uh, the three rules or is I, that? Uh, I figured he would because when Ethan Page couldn't make it, Doctor Dan stepped in. So we had at the last show. Ethan Page, not Ethan Page, uh, Joshua Bishop versus Dr. Dan, and Bishop beat the shit out of Dr. Dan. So I would figure this would kind of continue on one way or another. Okay. Looking forward to seeing it. I know Dr. Dan's on the card, so. Any more thoughts on this match? I think it's going to be really good. Uh, Ethan Page always puts on a good match in the AEW, I think, and uh, Josh Bishop's uh, one of the Bigger up and coming students, better students. Uh, the guy he's taken a pretty big role so far, and uh, I think he's handling it well. I like to see what uh, young Josh Bishop is uh, capable of. Anything more from you, Jobber? Nope, I'm good. All right, let's move on to Thrift Store Jobber's match of the evening. We have the Duke versus West <laughs> Barkley. Uh, Jobber, where do you lie for this match? Who are you backing? All right, so I am not a person that, uh, you know, I like Wes Barkley. He's a good kid. Uh, you know, his his uh, Barkley Nation is what it is. Uh, I just deal with it like everyone else does. Um, you know, I obviously am going to be part of Barkley Nation that night. Uh, you know, fuck anyone but, you know, fuck everyone. Or excuse me. Fuck the Duke. Doesn't matter who he's against. Uh, I will always be against the Duke. But in saying that, should I get into my theory about how this match is going to go? Or should we save that for a minute? Um, well, we can we can talk about it here. But uh, are you trying to say to fuck the Duke then, now, forever? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, go into your theory that you have about this match. All right, so you know Maserati Net Maserati West. You know, it seems like he's he's a kid who's fairly well off. Doesn't seem like a person that would need uh, any more money, but Everybody's got a price, as the Million Dollar Man once said. Um, so my thought here is um, Duke Money could use a, uh, a single star, an up-and-coming single star. So I feel like we're going to see a uh, uh, a real um, – and, uh, and sorry. So let me just interrupt real quick. I'm a little distracted. I have on uh, an ECW fan cam episode, uh, ECW from my hometown area – uh, Schenectady, New York from 1999. I was never watching wrestling at this time, but I had this on in the background and Beulah was just out bending over backwards. So I was momentarily distracted here. So yeah, Crazy. anyways. Yes. So um, <laughs> eh, eh, anyways, uh, I feel like we're going to see a uh, finger poke of doom situation here. We're going to see uh, Duke money, uh, you know, pull out some of his six figures and, um, you know, have a new Duke money member and, and yeah, finger poke a doom all the way. Um, what do you feel about that, Pat? I mean, if, if I'm just throwing my fantasy take out there, if I'm fantasy booking it like jobber, I, I, uh, I don't see that happening. I, I, I would, I could see, uh, the Duke maybe taking it to the kid and beating him up, maybe taking it a little too far in the end, really, really getting some heel heat and, uh, who comes out to stop it. But, uh, AIW owner John Thorne, and that's what sort of sets the tone. Them to maybe go at it for a second. That's what sets the, the tone for 
Thorn and Thorn and the Duke. I think we're gonna get that rivalry. I really, I hope. Maybe it's just the mark in me, but I really hope so. And uh, I think that'd be an easy way to do it. You know, the I think Wes Barkley's a pretty good kid, and uh, I could, you know, he stood toe to toe with Eddie, but uh, I could see the Duke maybe pulling out some dirty tactics or something, and uh, then taking it to the kid, and maybe Thorn comes out and takes care of business. I'm gonna go in a um, third direction. I mean, I know it's crazy. I know yeah, it's crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it would be great. <laughs> like, I get where Jobber's coming from, and that does make sense. But I don't know. I, I don't feel like Wes has been that kind of guy that you're, we're going to all want to boo at. I mean, I know there's the, the, the portion of the audience that does want to boo him. Totally get it. But I don't know. I feel like Wes is going to be kind of built in this match, like, it's going to get down for a lot of fans. Who are you going to boo? Granted, there's going to be the portion that's going to boo both of them. But I mean, Which I'm, that's just dumb. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's just dumb. I'm a huge fan of Wes. And I think this could be a time for him to turn around with the fan base. Like maybe they some people start to see a little bit more from him. And what I wouldn't be surprised if we see is the Duke getting help from Party Never Stops. And Okay. Yeah. Coming in on his side, because I think West could win, but it's going to be those guys that kind of like take him apart. But then the big question is who will come out for West Barkley? I don't think it's going to be Thorne. I think I really think that's going to be done because where okay. after after the Russell Rager match, where do you go with those two? Like, yeah, you do one on one, but that fucking match was nuts. Yeah, I still want to see him one on one. I don't know. And I think that sets it up easy, but. Yeah, I mean, I said it a while ago, um, even before the Eddie match, I think anybody who doesn't like Wes just doesn't like him sheerly because of his fans, which fair enough, hey, like who you like, boo who you want to boo. But the kid, you know, he's he's a good wrestler. He's got, the, I like the character. He's got charisma. He, you know, he's not, I think he's pretty good. If you don't like him, you're just, you just don't, you don't want to like him. So people who are booing Wes Barkley are just doing it because, you know, like I said. I understand the basis with the fans, but. Sure, and like I said, I, anyone's allowed to boo whoever yeah, they yeah. want. I I, I agree with a, is, a lot with what you said of the whole, like, everything that he has behind him. Like, he has a lot of character and charisma that you don't see from someone who, you know, when he just made his debut. Like, he has, right. he has a lot there, and he's going to build from that. So, I I really love the dude. Don't be surprised that before the end of the year you hear him on the show, a uh, teaser. And if I say it, of course, it means it's going to happen at some point. So I love the dude. He's great. I think they're, they're, the fan base has to turn around on him. But look at Joshua Bishop. It was the same thing with him. People hated him because of the fans. Now he's loved. I don't know what the West Barkley fans are, if they're going to go away or not. But at some point, fans got to figure out if they're going to root for him or not. And most importantly, fuck the Duke. Yes. So, hold on. Bishop's family was not the presence that Barclay Nation was. They only show up for a couple matches. I think they only show up for the shows on uh, the east side at Tequila Jacks. So, you know, they're not Barclay Nation, like, you know, causing, not would say causing a scene, but definitely like making their presence known, you know. But I think with uh, the Bishop Brigade is compared to all the other, you know, families that came for their their kids wrestling no one was as big a present as them so the fan base was like oh fuck fuck him because i don't those people annoy me and now <laughs> west barkley comes around and it's like oh shit this is way worse than we even thought the bishop brigade was because now you have people going uh uh well i'm now gonna root for joshua bishop but i think he, people were really starting to get behind him over the past like you know six months ever since the Feud started with uh, J Pro. Yeah, he's great. Do um, you guys have any more to talk about this match? Um, no, not really. Yeah, I I'll, mean, say, I'll say one thing, and I, it's going to pain me to say it, but I'm. I was surprised to hear the Duke is a cat person. As somebody who really enjoys cats, that was really it was weird to have something in common with that guy. I have to say that the Duke is a sensitive boy. Sensitive boys <laughs> like us love cats. Yeah, I was um, going to say, I'm a cat sense. person. But I was also disgusted with Swaggle's comments. And when uh, when the Duke said that he was, he felt the same way, you know, for some reason, I, you know, it was weird to agree with him. 
I think the funny thing is most wrestlers, especially male wrestlers, are cat people. I don't know how many wrestlers I have seen over the years have cats. Like, it's a crazy amount. Can't leave a dog over the weekend. No, it's true. But of the two, I, I prefer dogs. But that's just me. And if any wrestler has a French Bulldog, I, I start to love them just because they have the same breed I do. Right, but most you'd have to have somebody like go and check on it, you know, something like that. Cat, you can for the most part fill up the bowl pretty good, and for a day or two, they're they're good, they're good to go. Dogs at least can travel a lot better, from my experience. True. Like I took my dog out on the road. Well, actually, I bought her out on the road. I bought her in Dayton and uh, took her all a bunch of places. I I know you can do that with cats, but like it is harder. I couldn't even imagine having like litter in my truck but i do know people who did that but yeah teddy teddy hart <laughs> uh how how was he uh this weekend oh teddy was up to his old tricks you know it was a good time got to meet mr velvet that was uh one of the main points of going was getting to pet the cat accomplish that goal amongst other things if you know what i'm saying <laughs> and his knee was magically cured so now i want to ask thrift about that too at first, we kind of thought he was pulling the old, the 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 thing, like, pulling that move. But then once he got outside, I think it was just sort of a show for the fans. I don't know if he was trying to, like, pull any, like, carny shit. I think it was maybe just so that he didn't have to take the pin because it ended up being a three-way and stuff. And uh, I think it sort of just had to do with him not taking the pin, maybe. I don't know. It definitely was a full-on, like, you know, brother-as-fuck move uh, as far as, you know, Teddy... Pulling when he did, not pulling when he did, but I mean, as far as how the match was booked and all that. And, um, yeah, it was definitely a, a full on Teddy Hart appearance. All right. Let's move on to the main event of the evening the production Magnum CK and Frankie Flynn versus Philly Collins and Marino Tanaglia, the Philly Marino experience. This was set up at the last show. If you go back and listen to the review, of that particular show. We have the audio of the particular challenge. So PME has been on a roll. I want to say the past year and they've really taken off and this is their, their moment to shine. How do you guys feel about PME knocking at the door of the titles? Start with Pat. Um, I think, I think uh, it's a good move. I love PME. Um, kind of felt like they were built momentum towards this kind of saw this coming per se. Um, but I love it. Uh, those dudes, they bring it every time. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, them against uh, production because Magnum and Frankie always put on great matches. Uh, I think those two are great together. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, it's definitely main event worthy. Uh, I, gr- I agree putting it on main event for sure. Jobber. Um, well, uh, this kind of reminds me a little bit of when we're, Weird World got their title shot last year. Trying to think, who was the tag? Uh, who were uh, Two Infinity when they were tag champs last year? Mm-hmm. They got their title shot at Tequila Jacks. Um, it kind of seems a little bit like that. Uh, PME has definitely uh, had a lot of momentum working for them the last you know few shows. The crowd is really behind them. They've been doing great stuff in the ring. Um, you know, they're just on a roll. Um, I, you know, it'd be interesting to see uh, how this plays out. Um, I'm definitely pulling for them. Um, I don't know. It's, it still seems a little early for the production to, uh, you know, lose the belts, but you know, stranger things have happened. So uh, I think it'll be a great match. Um, those dudes are definitely going to work their ass off and pull out all the stops and put, try to put on their best match. Cause I mean, now they're getting their first, both these guys are getting their first, uh, you know, headlining shot. So, uh, I definitely think it's going to be uh, a really good match and, uh, you know, a great way to end the show. I'm wondering where the rest of production is going to be, because that could be a very big deciding factor with Derek Director, Eddie Only, and he's not on the card, but Danhausen. Yeah. He's still on his honeymoon. He's fucking, he's not going to be there. Yeah, I'm not sure really um, where we stand with Danhausen and the production, but that is an interesting fact, because we kind of discussed that last time, who would kind of have... PME's back, and I, I said before, I think Weird World would have their back, but 
production is a production. They have those guys, you know, that's, you're going to expect them to be there no matter what. So it'll be interesting to see who, you know, comes out or if any of this, if anyone does or, you know, who, who will have PMEs back for this. Cause you have to assume that the other members of the production are going to get involved in some way. I mean, they always yeah. do. So I think that the production versus PME is just getting started. Like we're not going to necessarily get into picks right now, but I see this happening in multiple events going forward. Maybe not this matchup. Maybe you, you know, you add somebody on PME side. Maybe you do a full on production versus, uh, yeah, the weird world. And, uh, I don't know, maybe puff puff would be really cool. Add addition to that. Just me throwing it out there. Uh, you dig that guy, huh? He's fun. Oh yeah, I saw him uh, in New York. We went to the Christmas Every Time I Die Christmas show last year uh, for my birthday. To see the bad boy. Who? Uh, yeah, man, he gonna talk about that at all or not? He got hurt. I guess they covered it on Pod Van Dam, but yeah, what a bummer. I mean, but could... uh, Puff was there, and uh, yeah, he he was fun. Uh, RJ City was there. That it was. Yeah, it were he was real fun. Puff was good. I like that guy. Have you seen him yet, or you just seen him online? Like, have you got to see him yet? Yeah, he. Popped in during the P uh the PB episode. Oh yeah, okay, that yeah. was on yeah because yeah. he right Revenge Pro right was where you guys. Yep. Okay, my bad. So he would just go perfect with PME, just those three, and you you throw in Weird World. Oh, that's a fun time. That's a party. I think I even joked around when we went to that show and because I someone mentioned it, it might have been Stacy or uh, Ed Battis about that pairing and i was like oh like he could be their bouncer because he's a bigger bigger dude yeah i could see i could see the pairing working yeah and they would all they would just it would just be such a fun atmosphere with those five but you could you could fit definitely someone else in, into that uh that team if that is where we go but we'll uh we'll get into that later on on the episode so um yeah let's go back to uh, the top of the card and go through all the matches. But before we do, we'll take a quick pause and uh, go with these commercials. Hey guys, Righteous Jesse here from the Kick Out of Two podcast. And after you get done listening to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, you should come on over and check out an episode of the Kick Out of Two podcast. Maybe you want to hear Stevie Richards talk about conspiracy theories. Maybe you're in the mood to hear Dr. Dan read Twas the Night Before Christmas. We got you covered on both of those, as well as interviews from Mandy Fernandez, Jimmy Rave, Tommy End, Chris Hero, Al Snow, and so many others. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at KOAT Podcast, and you can check us out on iTunes and SoundCloud. Are you tired of wrestling podcasts that don't even attend the shows that they're reviewing? Are you tired of the so-called experts saying the same things every week? At the Road Home from Wrestling Podcast, we are the friends that you can trust. We will show you the honesty and respect that you deserve. The Road Home from Wrestling Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, and wherever fine podcasts are sold. We'll see you on the Road Home. All right back with the zero cool card and we're gonna start with alley cat versus zoe sky zoe sky she's you know been around aaw for a long time but she's you know become quite a bigger name over the past couple years and now making a return going up against alley cat who's made a very huge name for herself breaking paws and everything in aaw but uh, between these two, I got to go with Alley Cat looking strong. How about you, Pat? Yeah, I would agree. Uh, th they don't really have too many women's matches in AIW. Um, but when it does recently, it's been with Alley Cat. She's, she has a pretty strong presence lately with AIW. So uh, I don't know much about the other uh, the other girl, Zo Zoe Sky is the name, right? You didn't see her versus uh, Shayna? Uh, the what show was it? Because I, like I said, I've only been coming like just under two, like under two years. So it was she was the I fill forget. in for Candace when she couldn't. Yeah, I forget it. the show. I was there for that. Um, 
Yeah, I forget what it was. Which one it was? Yeah, because she's a you know Cleveland Northeast Ohio girl. That's you know okay. she, she's been around for uh I want to say a good ten years, if not longer. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea, but yeah, I got Alley Cat. How about you, Jobber? Hasn't uh, that Zoe chick, uh, she worked for JCW. I feel like somebody said, said that at the last show, that she was like a juggalo or something. Uh, More juggalo talk. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm i not 100% sure. She used to go by Angel Dust. And with, yeah, wasn't she Angel Dust at the last show? No, she was. I think that's when she had changed to Zoe Sky. She's been Zoe Sky for about a year and a half now. The, um, I'm trying to remember oh, what show was that. I want to say it was Girls' Night Out when we had, I don't remember if it was Angel Dust or Zoe Sky, whatever, versus Shotzi Blackheart for the like Rise of the Phoenix title or something like that for the the Rise organization, the female Rise organization. And Zoe was champion and Shotzi beat her. That was like... March 2017. That was like, I think, Biggin's last show. Yeah, I didn't go on any of those fucking uh, women's shows. I don't own sweatpants. <laughs> no, it's not that you don't own sweatpants. You don't own a camera with, like, multiple zoom lenses. Shout I out. actually used to, but uh, <laughs> not for that purpose. Shout out to Ed Battis for being the pervert of the show um did you pick jobber no uh, you just asked question alley cat yeah so the cat people pick alley cat yeah we're cat we're cat people we already said that all ego ethan page versus joshua bishop um we already talked about this yeah but we didn't do picks is it is you it, know the format of the show it's like the fourth time you've been on come on <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me also interrupt. I just got distracted by uh, Sunny basically showing her asshole to the camera. You're watching. It's always Sunny. You're watching that show. I mean that uh, video. So, what? Uh, what? <laughs> porno? No, no, this is no. She's not. She's not Putin on this one. It's just her uh, with her. Uh, I don't know. Widow. I guess she was. Was she married him at the time? Anyways, the dude she basically <laughs> caused to kill himself. I have no idea what either of you two are talking. Chris this Candido, man, greasy. come on. Yeah. Greasy. Um, so, all ego Ethan Page versus Joshua Bishop. I'm picking Ethan Page. Pat. Yeah, it's hard to pick against Ethan Page. Um, I really like Joshua Bishop. Um, I'm curious to see how the Bishop Brigade will show out in this uh, in this show. They haven't sort of been around, as we discussed earlier. They haven't really been around too much lately, but I uh, got to go. Got to go Ethan Page. Sorry, Josh. Well, according to Josh, he doesn't listen to this show anymore because I I won't have Kenny Wang on yet. Yes, he does. They all listen. They're all liars. If they don't, he's a fucking liar. That's why they wrestle. That's why they watch all the show, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> They're all full of shit. That's why they all vanity search. They all listen. Promise you. Listen, if you want to get a show uh, that gets you in trouble, get me and Kenny Wang all fucked up uh, talking. And uh, that'll, that'll get you in trouble. I'm calling dibs on coming on that show just so I could sit back and laugh. I I kind of want him on, but I don't know if I want him on th this kind of format of the preview review. Like, maybe 2019. I have ideas for things that I want to do next year. Like, some, like, random different episodes. Like, they've been talked about in private. One of them was, like, like a, a big get-together where we all meet somewhere and we just, like, bullshit. I think Pat AI, AIW Roundtable. That was what we were discussing that time, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm all for it. Maybe something like that with him. We'll figure it out. But I know, like Josh is like, oh, you need to have him on. You need to have him on. Oh, I'm not listening until you have him on. Oh, okay. Kenny's a good dude. I've got to meet him. Uh, like get to know him a little bit recently after a couple shows we hang out uh, intermission and before and after the show. He's a pretty cool, dude. I like the guy. On a on a kind of a side note, um, when we, we went to Revenge Pro, it was me, my girlfriend, Stacy went, Pam went with Stacy, uh, AW fan Kim, Stefia, a couple other people or one other person that I don't really know. But 
there was these gr- group of guys ahead of us. And if you go to my personal Instagram, you got to dig uh, back up quite a ways because they post like th- at least three things a day. But if you go back to this one particular video, I'm behind these dudes. And this is pre-show. They are just obnoxious as fuck. And like they're as bad as anybody thinks AIW fans are. These people were trying to get themselves over before the show even fucking started. And it was annoying, and they, I was right behind them. And I was like, okay, like, I'm going to battle back with them. I'm not going to, like, talk shit now. But when the show started, it hit me. I looked over at Stacy, and I'm like, I'm going to turn into Kenny fucking Wang. I'm just going to yell obnoxious shit behind them. I'm going to keep calling people a beast. And everything that Kenny Wang did, I did. So. See, the reason I love Kenny is because... I don't think he's doing that shit to be obnoxious. He's just into, he loves wrestling as much as I do. And he's just had a couple beverages and he's into the match. He, he's I mean, it, dude. Like, that's why I like him, dude. He's great. I think he's obnoxious a little bit, but like, I, I, I have fun with like when he yells stuff, I'll yell stuff back. But I looked at it as, oh, I'm going to become Kenny Wang behind <laughs> these annoying fuckers. Like, I'm going to just get all Kenny Wang mode, and I'm just going to fucking yell. And it was cool because that show had a lot of AIW talent. Like, the first match had Eddie only, and these guys had no idea who he was. So I'm like, all right, yay, I'm going to fucking root for Eddie only, loud as I fucking can. He probably loved that, too. Eddie was loving that shit. Oh, he did. Uh, a lot of the, the all the AIW wrestlers, especially, especially him, because we were just loud as fuck for him. And yeah, I, that's cool. I'm sure that's probably uh, pretty uh, feels pretty good if you're a rest, you know, wrestling somewhere a little farther than hometown. You see some hometown people kind of showing it out for you, putting you over. That's probably a good feeling. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> should we all pick? Ed's not even on this fucking show, and we're doing all these sidebars, but that's fine. Yeah, I think everyone picked that one. Ethan Page, all the way. Thrift store. Did you pick Page or Bishop? No, I, I was going to say. Um, I'm going to go with Bishop, but I guess it depends on what role Dr. Dan plays. I think we interrupted him getting a drink. That's kind I of just I'm now I'm getting a drink. I'm refilling <laughs> my drink. We could tell the audio is completely different. Anyway, um, let's move on to the... His, his mansion in the in the kitchen has vaulted ceilings, so that's why it sounds weird. Like I know. That's why we, we, everyone has different seats at AIW. Everyone kind of has their own little sections. That's why I was called where me and Thrift Store sit, Thrift Store Heights. Because we're over in the, the front row. We're, in the, we're behind hard cam. We're the good side. We don't have to watch ourselves mark out on camera. <laughs> Thrift Store Heights. Uh, yeah. Is that front a, row, baby. Is that Chair Throw City? Ha! Listen. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make him mad. He's, gonna, he's not going to throw it into the ring. He's going to throw it at you next time. I, I got nothing to add to this conversation. <laughs> Jobber, do you want us to raise some money for you? Give me a charity. Uh, you're, you're reaching on that one for a second, but uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Well, I've only done stand-up once. That's why. Anyway, let's get on to the next match. AJ Gray versus Matthew Justice. Who the fuck will be walking out of this alive? Because both of these two are crazy motherfuckers. If I were to pick, mm, I'm going to go Matthew Justice. Pat. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, two big dudes throwing down, locking them up. Um, Matthew Justice has been on a pretty good tear, but AJ Gray has won his last couple matches. Um, it's hard to say, man. It's a really tough decision in this one. Um, shit. I gotta go Justice. Jobber. Um, I think I gotta go Justice in this one. Um, he, he's been on a roll. He's had some really cool spots the last few, uh, the last few shows, but, um, I think he, I think he deserves himself a win here. So yeah, I'm going, I'm going with him. I think Justice is going to be on the title chase. I don't know which one, but it's going to be Justice versus Donst or Justice versus Sauce. One of them. That's got to happen for a title. I could see it. Um, he got a shot against Cage, so I could definitely see him winning a match or two in the next couple of shows and then coming back and challenging for it. Yeah, that, that makes complete sense. How about the Duke versus Wes Barkley in a... Two guys pointing at the camera match. If you look at the gra- graphic, they're both pointing. Actually, Wes has one. Duke has both hands pointing, and he's squinting at the same time. So we kind of talked about it earlier. 
I'm going to go with the Duke, but I do think it will not be fair for Wes Barkley. Patrick. I got a lot of thoughts on what's going to happen, but my official pick will be Wes Barkley winning the match. Fuck the Duke. Finger poke of doom. All right, next match. The production, Derek Director and Eddie Only versus The Weird World, Alex Worldwide Keller and Weird Body, Evan Adams. I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the production. Patrick. Um, I'm going Weird World on this one. Love the production, love those guys, but uh, Weird World have been on a tear. Uh, I'm going to chew them up. Weird World. Hmm, this is a very tough one. Um, Eddie only has a lot of tricks up his short little sleeve, so I'm going to go with the uh, production. Will there be any Cheetos in this match? <laughs> that would be great if Weird World brought some Cheetos. I, I would really be good. They'd probably eat them before the match, though. Never know. That, that that would actually be the point. They, they I got, guess they yeah, got to get they, those yeah they fingers gotta, all oranged up. Yeah, then have a test of strength. Be great. I mean that is pretty gross though. To Eddie's point, I mean it, to be fair, that Cheeto hands is pretty disgusting. Um, I enjoy Cheetos, but like I don't like as discussed on Virtual Pros. I don't like lick my fingers or nothing. That is pretty disgusting. I, I wouldn't want somebody touching me with Cheeto thing. It's just like a whole level of disgusting i mean he's even mentioned it's not just cheetos like ter- cheetos doritos anything that leaves a residue on your hands like that is disgusting to him that's a lot of snack products i mean it happens yeah. just wash it off you know what yeah, I'm saying? Well, like, most of them most of them create hand problems cheetos are another hand problems i'll be completely honest i love cheetos but they're definitely a snack i eat in private uh, you know, with no one around, um, <laughs> home alone gross. with no windows open. It's, it's just, it's just a gross thing to eat. Uh, they smell bad. There's shit everywhere. Uh, yeah, you get all orangey, but uh, you know, they just taste so good. But yeah, that's it's snack eating private. I think he said if he eats them, it's like grab a Cheeto, eat it, wash his hands, or like a wipe, wipe, wipe. That, that's Cheeto, the whole fucking thing, eat, man. That's wipe, you're wipe. not yeah. snacking efficiently. It's like eating wings. You eat them. Get messy, clean up, and get out of there. But you do it where no one can see you. Oh no, I, I'll eat wings in public, and I'll make a mess of myself. I'll look, yeah, I'll look like a clown. Eh, more clown talk. Uh, yeah, I will look like a clown when I'm done. But yeah, because wing face and being dirty from wings is more socially acceptable. Because especially they put the paper towels and wet wipes like right there at the table. Yeah, that's why I love me some Quaker steak. Give you the big old wet ones. Yeah, love that. I can't open them because my hands are fucking covered with sauce. <laughs> bastards and then like oh here's a twizzler have fun opening it fucker anyway uh let's move on to dominic Greeny versus zach thomas in a i'm yelling at the camera match yes another uh physical uh, not physical uh visual joke if you look at the, the uh match graphic dominic Greeny and zach thomas are both wide-eyed op- uh wide mouth it's getting late anyway they're both angry boys doing a little bit of yelling. Yeah. I got to go bad boy Dom. Dom's ripping shit up. Speaking of which, we got Jobber here. He uh, he, he turned his back on you, which we kind of talked about this, but yeah. yeah. It is what it is, man. He uh, He's going down a different route. Uh, I, he's definitely going to show this little kid what's up. Zach's going to gonna give it a shot, but, you know, he's, he's still new and he's still figuring this stuff out. So, uh. Yeah, ex- expect Don to take home the win with a little bit of punishment. Yeah, I agree. I think we're going to see more the uh, aggressive kind of no fucks given Dom Greeny. Um, I like uh, Zach, the one man war. I like he. I think he's a he's good up and comer. I like the kid, but Dom's on a bit of a uh, he's on a bit of a path here. I doubt we would see it, but what if Dom joins Duke Money? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. It would be weird. I think they have. I mean, that's uh, there's already five of them. I, do they build a stable in AIW that's bigger than five? So far, that's that's the, the most, right? Yeah, that would uh, be. I, most. I mean, we, I don't we, think Dom needs to be there. He doesn't need that. I mean, we talked about West joining, so right. I mean, I get. I, I I'm just saying. I don't see Dom as it personally. But there gets no more turning on thrift store jobber than that. Fine, I got other people to root for. <laughs> All right, next up we have. Wait, no, we didn't. We don't. 
big picks for that. Um, do we all pick Dom? I thought you, you said would... Dom. I said Dom. Okay. I think yeah, about three I stars said... before me. He said uh, Dom as well. I don't write this shit down, so. I feel it. No worries. <laughs> Party never stops. Parker Pierce and big Tuan Tucker versus the Young Studs. Eric Ryan and Bobby Beverly. Uh, this one, I'm going to go with Party Never Stops. Patrick. Um, it's hard to pick against young studs. Um, you see what they're capable of. Uh, th- them dudes are, uh, they bring it every time they're, they're, they're serious business, but, uh, I could see maybe, uh, Mansur or Jock or maybe even just the Duke again coming in to play with this. Just a numbers game. I think maybe we do see party never stops. Get a W here. Jobber. Uh, if that happens, it's only because, uh, Eric Ryan is going to stab Big Tuan, and then Mancer or somebody's going to come out and save him. But uh, yeah, Big Tuan's getting stabbed. More stabbing of Big Tuan, huh? I, I just want to see people get stabbed all the time. <laughs> Jesus. The, the, he's back. The ghoul is back. <laughs> His bloodlust has returned. Next match the Jollyville Fuckets versus No Consequences, Trey Lamar, and Chase Oliver. I feel like the Fuckets haven't had a win in a while, and I think this will be a win for them. How about you, Patrick? Um, yeah, yeah, we haven't really a uh, single tag team, like two-on-two tag team for a little bit. They've been in some of the, the big, the bigger tag matches, but love the Fuckets. Uh, Nasty Russ and Big Team Money are my boys. Uh, definitely you see them coming out on top in this one. Jobber. Uh, I'm going with no consequences here. Um... Yeah, I like the fuckets, but uh, those kids got some flashy moves they're going to pull out of their ass. Yeah, I could see something, somebody off the top, a dive to the, to the outside or something. I could see that. You're, you're right. Chase Oliver and Trey got some, they do have some flashy shit. I'll agree. Next match, the six-man scramble match. TKD versus Ryder Reed versus Rex Brody versus Brian Carson versus Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham versus Garrison King. This would be the first time uh, Brian Carson and Dr. Dan have been in the same ring together. I'm curious to see if there's if they work together, or most likely, they don't. But if I'm going to pick a winner here, uh, Rex Brody. How about you, Patrick? Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the Carson-Dr. Dan thing. Uh, it seemed to me like Carson was kind of done with Dr. Dan. Um <clears throat> but yeah, I actually uh, I got Carson winning this one personally. Jobber. I I already forgot who the fuck's in the match. Uh, I got <laughs> Ouch. Rex Brody, Doctor Dan, uh, Brian Carson. Who else? Ryder, Ryder Reed. Reed. Ryder T- Reed. Uh, TKD. Two more guys. Chris. Garrison K- Gary the King balling man. Gary the King. Is he well. hasn't been he hasn't been there in a while. Gary's he, been gone for a while. He hasn't been in a singles match in a while. Yeah, true, well, who's, true. Who's who's the sixth man? TKD, Tom Quando. Oh Christ! Uh, let's go with him. Let's. Why not? Surprise okay. winner. Okay. I think this match anybody can win, and so yeah, the, I, I'll go with that. Yeah. And then last but not least, we have the main event for the AIW Tag Team Championships: the production Magnum CK and Frankie Flynn versus the Philly Marino Experience, Philly Collins and. Marino Tanaglia. I don't think there's any way we see the production lose. So the production will retain the AIW Tag Team Championships. Patrick. Yeah, I think we're going to see PME kind of chase it for a bit here with the production, maybe. I, I don't think it'll be a one and done with them. Um, I, <clears throat> it's hard to pick against Magnum CK and Frankie. They're real good. Um, but I also love PME, but I, I think you're going to see the production come out on top here. But I, I don't think that's the last we'll see of it for sure. Um, I think we're going to see some of this back and forth a little bit for a few shows here. Job. Um, you know, I'd like to see PME win it, but I don't think they will. I think there'll be some shenanigans at some point. Um, you know, Chase is better than the catch, as they say. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go with production. All right. That's uh, that's the whole card. Any final thoughts or last-minute plugs before we go, Patrick? No, I think it's going to be a good show. I'm excited to see this new kind of little room. Um, I think we're all going to be squeezed in there pretty tight, and it should be uh, interesting. 
I, I'm I'm pretty excited for the show. How about you, Jobber? Uh, yeah, it'll be a fun time. Um, you know, it, it, like Pat was saying, it'll be packed. Uh, I know they have a full bar and food, and the food's actually decent, so that's a very nice option. I know it's not going to be like Tequila Jacks as far as their uh, service or their or, uh, offerings are going to be. So, again, step up in that department. I don't know um, how, how long the food goes, but, man, I was looking at their menu. There's some good shit on that menu. Like, there, yeah, it's not just, like, fried bullshit. Like, you can get, like, sandwiches. Like, it, it's a good menu as far as it looks. Yeah, this is, this is I wouldn't say it's a, you know, fucking, you know, fancy bar, but it's definitely a nicer one. Uh, you know, cool. Lakewood's got a lot of good stuff in that area, so uh, they have a lot of competition. So, no, it's a good spot uh, in that one. Monsoon does his thing bringing pizza, you know, this great, but... This is a bar with a full kitchen. Like the menu looks pretty nice, so I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, for sure. Is it gonna have um, mozzarella sticks? Dude, there's like fried chicken sandwiches. Like it's crazy. Like there's a bunch of stuff. They definitely yeah. have apps with like like mozzarella sticks as a side, but they have like full on entrees. And- I was making I was making a reference to the conversations we had over the weekend. Granted, I know people wouldn't get it, but I know you were excited that a show had mozzarella sticks. Yo, I mean, it, yeah, it was, a cool did. it was good. They were good mozzarella sticks too. All right, Jobber. Um, yeah, so plugs, uh, TS Jobber, Twitter, at Thrift Store Jobber, Etsy, eBay, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, I'll probably have some stickers uh, at the show with me. Mike from Virtual Pros just sent me some new stickers with uh, their new beanie that just came out. Sounds like they'll be doing another run of those because this fax is out faster than playing. Um, so I think we're going to do our second run of those and give a shot. So all of that at VRTL Pros. Um, and yeah, look for me in Akron. I'll have, uh, I'll have a table set up. Maybe I'll try to get a new shirt out or something. But uh, yeah, I'll be there at Akron with uh, my whole table. Yeah, definitely a big shout out to Virtual Pros. Been really enjoying them lately. I want to send in an email to them, but my biggest issue is getting around to actually fucking doing it. But I, I do enjoy their show. And even the fact that, you know, Mike, gave this gave this show a free plug like earlier in the show he was telling like but they were telling people like oh like we're not gonna plug your shit and then he's just like oh yeah you know resting chairs like, all right didn't ex- didn't expect that that's pretty cool so i i do plan on kicking around doing that i i, I do want to buy a beanie but that those fuckers did go pretty fast at least by the time that i actually got around to double checking it it was all sold out so yeah well, then they, they literally sold out in the- that's why you gotta set your alarm like i said on twitter man he told you what time 8 p.m Everything I mean, they've ever made sells out immediately. It's we, you know, there was a little bit because these are these are not cheap beanies. So uh, you know, I think he was a little ner- he underestimated his demand. Say this, but uh, they sold out so quick that it sounds like he'll uh, might be doing another batch. And also, uh, you know, I finally got him up to speed with how to use stamps.com the right way. Uh, it seemed like he was doing it the wrong way for a year and a half or so, and now he's now he's got it sorted. So now he can get his shipping done fast and efficiently just like I do anytime I uh, sell anything. So, yeah, they'll be, they'll be doing another run, I think. And, of course, you can find myself at Heavyset330 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, just like you can find this show at Resting Cheers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Resting Cheers, Twitter.com slash Resting Cheers, and Instagram.com slash Resting Cheers. Email, if you so choose to desire, Resting Cheers at gmail.com. Please rate, review, and subscribe to wherever you're listening to this podcast at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean, restingcheers.podbean.com. We do have the merch store once again at whatamaneuver.net. Please check it out and pick yourself something up. Check out all of our friends on the Trending Topics Network, such as All Beer Inside, The Eurovision Showcase, and Old School at the Movies. Check out our other podcast friends, such as Pod Van Dam, Adults, Benefit of Podcasting, Center Stage, S-E-N-T-E-R Stage, Super Fantastic Podcast, the Road Home from Wrestling, Kick Out of Two, The Indie Cast, Sobro Network, and The Big Gold Belt Podcast. Check out our other non-podcast friends, such as Thrift Store Jobber, Rebel Life Media, The Savage Stass, Set Tab Photo, Ringside Shots Photography, Sickening Pictures, NEO Sports Insiders, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers where everybody knows your name, even when you're down with the clown, till you're dead in the ground. Later. Yeah, yeah, you gotta say more Juggalo shit so you can get a bunch of Juggalo hits. <laughs> Hashtag whoop whoop. <laughs>
Making your way in the world today Takes everything you got Taking a break from all your worries Sure would help a lot Would you like you get away?